It's my joy and honor to turn it over to Dr. Kala Singh. Uh, he is a physician, author, scholar, community activist, speaker, and television, uh, television and YouTube personality. So his, he has a very extensive biography and list of achievements, which is just so wonderful. And um, also at this time, he's serving as the as Assistant Secretary of the Global Sikh Council and the Vice Chair of the Multi-Faith Summit Council of BC. So we're so grateful to hear from him. When you're ready, over to you, Dr. Kala. Yes, I'm ready. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Kathy, for uh, giving me a chance to share some of the views of uh, Guru Nanak with uh, all of you. And uh, the work you are doing is uh, really great work. And I think uh, I'll be joining you whenever I get time every week, you know, depending upon. Uh, and to start with uh, uh, what we heard uh, about Vahe Guru and about the Shabad which was sung, I will uh, like to talk a little bit about that one. But before that, uh, the greetings which are commonly used, there are many greetings in uh, Sikhi, but the most commonly used is uh, Vahe Guru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vahe Guru Ji Ki Fateh. So it has got a twofold uh, affirmation. Uh, first is expression of special relationship between the Creator and those who dedicate their entire life to the good deeds and truthfulness that is the Creator's service, God's service. And second is expression of that faith in the ultimate triumph and victory of the forces of goodness. And when we heard about chanting of uh, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, Vahe Guru, that's where it comes. Wah means wow. And Guru means the teacher. So when we listen to the teachings of the Guru and we understand it and we imbibe it in our mind and we live our life accordingly, then the life becomes very peaceful. That's when the mind itself says, wow, Guru. Like Kathy, the work that he's doing, when I look at it and when I appreciate it, then automatically it will come up from my mind, wow, Kathy, what good work you are doing. So the same thing like my guru. Otherwise, the God does not have any name. As we heard in the Shabbat, Tu Mira Pita, Tu Hai Mira Mata, this new creator is my father, my mother, my friends, my relatives, my brothers, my sisters, everything. Spiritually, you are the one. So when I feel that those attributes of the God, attributes like a father, mother, sister, friend, then I feel happiness in me that the God is always, the Creator is always with me. That was the uh, main gist of that Shabbat which was sung. Uh, uh, before we go to Vesaki, it is better that I talk about what Sikhi is and then how it went up to Vesaki. Sikhi is a seeker, that means a student, and Guru is a teacher. So it is a student-teacher relationship. Student asks the questions, and the Guru teacher replies it. And then we follow it and make our life better. So do not follow anything, anybody, any Guru blindly. It is a student and teacher relationship and a question answer. And there are 10 Gurus. And at present, the Guru is the holy book, Shri Guru Granth Sahib, which contains the teachings of the Gurus. I will come to that a bit later. Guru Nanak uh, is the founder. Uh, he was from 1469 to 1539. During his time, he observed that the ignorant masses were being treated very unfairly by both the rulers and by the clergy. And in fact, they are even today. They were suffering from injustices, oppression, and exploitation. There was no one to listen to them, 
and to redress their situation. The rulers taxed them to death and even took away their wealth by force. Their daughters were kidnapped, sexually exploited. And the clergy was also doing almost the same thing. People had no spiritual knowledge. And whenever they suffered from some problems like disease, loss of income, death, or any problem, the clergy will come up with some meaningless and irrational solutions which would cost them money. If they refused, they will threaten them with more sufferings. And so they were in a no-win situation. So Guru Nanak was pained deeply to watch such a plight of the poor masses. And he raised his voice against these injustices, against the exploitation, and against everything which was going on. So he started to give the message. And he traveled for 24 years of his life in four journeys covering 28,000 kilometers on foot at that time around the world as far as what is today's Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Russia, China, Nepal, Sikkim, Bhutan, Burma, and Sri Lanka, and went up to all those mountains which were impassable at that time. So Guru Gurdanak observed that Hindus have their own gods, and Islam their own god. So there were, these were two big religions at that time. And they were fighting each other, that their god is superior. So Guru Nanak brought the revolution when he said, Ek Omkar, there is only one creator. And that one creator is the creator of the whole creation. God is in us. God is around us. God is with us. Tu mera pita, tu mera mata, tu mera rakha, sabni thai, every place, everywhere, you are my savior. And we are all children of one God. So when we think of that, we are all children of one God. That is when the exploitation stops. Guru Nanak talked of social e equality wherever he went. And he said that there is only one religion. That is the religion of good deeds. And those good deeds, he said, was truthful character that is rising above evils like sexual lust. And we have seen it in Me Too movement, how many celebrities have fallen from grace. The anger, the attachment to worldly possessions, greed, and the ego. And we should imbibe the godly virtues, which are voluntary service, contentment, compassion, righteousness, and truthful character. I'll give you some of the attributes of Guru Nanak at that time. He was a great environmentalist. Today, we see that our environment is suffering. And everybody is talking, even the nation is talking about saving the planet Earth. But more than 500 years ago, Guru Nanak compared the air, water, and earth with air as the guru, water as the father, and earth as the great mother. So if we want to take care of our guru, take knowledge from that, and we want to take care of our father, our children, and our mother, we should be taking care of our environment as air, water, and earth. And the way the guru, the father and the mother look after us the same way air, water, and earth looks after us. So we should be protecting them. He was a spiritualist. I'll give only one example, otherwise the whole Guru Granth Sahib is full of that. That he said, ego is a chronic disease. But it's not incurable. So ego can be controlled by humility. Just one small example. A, going on the road, somebody hawks at me. What happens? 
my ego hurts. How can he honk, honk at me? What did I do? So I will honk twice at, at that person. And we have seen many times, I've read in the newspapers, there's a fight breaks out many times. People come out and start fighting. So if it is in my humility, out of humility, I will keep quiet. Let this man honk at me, maybe once, twice, and he will go away. That can solve the problem. We, rest is wise for human rights. He said there is no one is Hindu, no one is Muslim. We are all children of one God. So we are equal. So that is the father of the God and brotherhood of the mankind. So that way, he laid the foundation of human rights for all at that time. But the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by, by General Assembly was on 10th of December 1948. But Guru Nanak did it at that time. When we look at, at the human rights, I will uh, talk about the martyrdom of uh, uh, Sikh Gurus if I'm given a chance again, when uh, you celebrate the martyrdom of the fifth Guru, Guru Arjan, uh, I'll be speaking uh, about that in great detail at that time. But at this time, about the human rights, I will talk about only uh, the martyrdom of the ninth Guru, uh, Guru Tegh Bahadur, is a practical example of compassion and interfaith harmony. The Aurangzeb uh, was the Muslim emperor of India at that time, and he started a campaign of forcibly converting Hindus to Islam and demolishing Hindu temples. That was his way. Uh, that doesn't mean, does mean that all the Muslims were like that or are there today, but uh, it is just an example of, the, of, of one emperor. So those who refused were killed. So the, the pundits, uh, the Hindu pundits at that time, they came in a dele delegation to Guru Tegh Bahadur and asked for his intercession. And Guru Tegh Bahadur said, uh, ask uh, Orange to convert me to Islam. And if he could convert me, then uh, uh, then everybody, all of you will be converted automatically. And to, for the intercession, he started his journey to Delhi. And then along with him, hundreds and thousands of six joined him. But uh, Orange arrested him on the way. So along with him were arrested uh, by Dialdas and two brothers, Pai Matidas and Pai Satidas. So Guru was put in a cage and Aurangzeb told him that uh, either you become uh, accept Islam or show me a miracle, otherwise you will be killed. So Guru refused all of that. Then he put Pai Dialdas he watered him by boiling alive in a pot of boiling water. Paimati Das was made to stand erect and tied to two posts. And the two executioners placed a double-handed saw on his head and he was sawn from across from head to loins by cutting into two pieces. Paimati Das was martyred by wrapping him in a cotton, pouring oil and burning alive. Well, Gurtek Bhadar was witnessing all these things. Ultimately, he was beheaded on 24th of November, 1675. So all this martyrdom was for what? Guru Tegh Bhattar was not a Hindu. And all the gurus did not accept Hindu philosophy. But he sacrificed his life and his companions sacrificed their life for the freedom of worship that everybody have the right to freedom of worship. We may not like it, that is a different thing. But nobody can force anybody. And as part of equality, uh, the daily prayer uh, that is called Ardas 6 do is, um, it concludes the couplet, Nanak implore the love of God, Mochi, let everyone prosper. Coming to women's rights, during that time, and even today, majority of world religions have placed women in a secondary position to men, and they are even today. And at that time, they were considered as 
you will lower them second class citizen. So Guru Nanak gave them equality. And in the couplet, in, in the hymn, he wrote that we marry a woman. When a woman dies, we marry another woman. Women are the one who give birth to us, all of us, including saints and the kings. So why to call women a second class citizen? Why to call them low? But when we look at uh, uh, women's rights uh, in, in today's world, in USA, Colorado was the first state to start, adopt an amendment granting women the right to vote. That was in 1893 AD. But Guru Nanak did it in 1499. And uh, nobody, in fact, knows what Guru Nanak did. And as, as an educationist, what he will do to put his point, he will not say, he will not criticize anyone that you are doing it wrong. What we will do, like for, for, I'll give two examples. He went to Mecca as a haji and he slept with his feet towards Mecca, towards Kaaba. And all those hajis got angered with him. So he created an attention. And they asked him, who is this infidel putting their feet towards Kaaba? So he said, put my feet where you think there is no God. Just to make them realize that God is pervasive everywhere and in all of us, not only in one, in one direction or at, or at one place. That was his way of giving his point of view rather than condemning them. He went to Haridwar, Hindu place, where Hindus were uh, offering water towards sun that is in the east as oblation to their ancestors in, in heaven. And Guru Nanak started putting, offering water on the opposite direction, in the west. So that created an attention. And the Hindus asked, what the hell are you doing? He said, I'm giving the water to my, my, my fields in Punjab. How can you use your water in, in Punjab? He said that in the same way, your water can reach millions of miles away in some other planet, wherever you think your ancestors are. So this was the way of giving his message rather than condemning it. In fact, today again, there is a need to reason and not to force our ideas onto others. If all of us, and more so the world leaders, adopt this, many of our conflicts that the world is experiencing can be prevented and solved and same so, so too in our homes also. Guru Nanak was a great, great scientist. During his time, nobody knew the science. And he gave the theory of Big Bang at that time. The origin of life in water, evolution of species and the reproduction. He said that before this universe came into being, there was utter darkness everywhere. And then God, that is the universal energy, in fact, the God in Sikhi is a universal energy, was in a trance. And from that energy, a sound came. From that sound came many things, and they started expanding. That were the planets. And from that sound, first came air, that was the gas, they wanted, this is what the Big Bang theory says. From that air came the water, and from the water came the first inorganic matter, organic matter, and then the living beings. This is what today's science says. Uh, I'll come to the Holy Book, Guru Granth Sahib. A whole book is said to be universal if its message is for entire humanity and not for its followers only. And Guru Granth Sahib is a universal holy, holy book who talks of only one creator. It talks of co coexistence and cooperation because of the universal father of good and brotherhood of mankind. 
Guru Granth Sahib contains teachings of Sikh Gurus and 30 Hindu and Muslim saints. An example of interfaith relations and respect. And these saints belong to diverse religious, social, cultural and linguistic background and from different parts of India. It talks of controlling the mind, which is in every human way. It does not talk of any rituals to please the God. And when we talk about equality and interfaith relations, the Drabar Shabam Ritsar, which is normally called Golden Temple, the foundation stone was laid by a Muslim in Yamir. So uh, there is a uh, 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 many uh, big personalities have talked about Guru Granth Sahib. I think my, the time is running short. So I will only talk about Bertrand Russell. That in 1950, uh, Bertrand Russell was awarded the Nobel Prize, uh, Nobel Prize in Literature. And he said, if someone, some lucky man survived the onslaught of Third World War of atomic and hydrogen bombs, the Sikh religion will be the only means of guiding them. It has the capability, but Sikhs have not brought out in broad daylight the splendid doctrines of their religion, which has come into existence for the benefit of the entire man mankind. And I have said in many, many times that Guru Nanak started uh, human rights, Guru Nanak started uh, equality, uh, women's rights, but nobody knows the Guru Nanak's contribution because the Sikhs have failed to bring this out in a broad daylight. So now coming to Vaisakhi, Guru Nanak wanted to create a society which is based on truthful character and equality. That nobody is low, nobody is high, no castes, no nothing. So on Vaisakhi day, that is 14th of April 1699, Guru Gobind Singh, the last Guru, uh, chose uh, Vaisakhi Day, and which is, was already being celebrated as Harvest Festival. So on that day, he called the congregation. I will not go into detail what happened in the congregation, but he gave, he baptized first the five who came forward to take the baptism, that is the holy water. We don't call it baptism, but just because of English, there's no idea any other term. So we, so I use that one. And after baptizing them, he gave them the surname of Singh. That is the brotherhood, that everybody is a Singh. That means power lion. And the women were given the, uh, the surname Kaur. That brings equality in the human beings. And after giving them baptism, Guru Gobind Singh kneeled down to these five and said, please baptize me also, so that I can also join the same brotherhood. But this type of humanity is not seen anywhere, in any religion or any, uh, 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 anywhere in this universe. And after that, he gave commandment of how to live a truthful character. And for the outer experience of five case, that is case that everybody is born with the hair. Anywhere, any religion or any culture they belong to, everybody is born with the hair. So we should keep it because it is a gift of God. Case kach, which will be a, a underwear, that is a moral character. Kanga, that is to clean the hair. Kanga, cage, kada, that is a bracelet, which shows, which is been given different uh, uh, meanings, but uh, the main thing is that uh, it stops me whenever I want to do something wrong with my right hand, it stops me that I'm the uh, Sikh, Sikh of the Guru. And the Kirpan, that is, with the Kirpan, with this character, Guru Gobind Singh that they created the Sikh soldier. If the Kirpan, the sword is in the hand of a soldier, soldier will kill it. Use it for any purpose. But a saint soldier will not do it. So on that day, 
Guru gives the concept of same soldier. That means a same soldier is protecting the oppressed from the tyranny of the oppressor, even at the cost of his her life. But today, we don't take out the kirpan, but we help the person who needs it in any way which is possible now, today, these days, like going to the courts or anything. Weapon is to be used only for protecting oneself and others, not for oppression and senseless killing. War should be waged as a last resort, and war should be waged without hatred, any desire, or any revenge. The purpose of war should not be to should be to deliver justice, not for revenge. Territory should not be annexed. Looting and booting is forbidden. And only a minimum of force is to be used. And when it is achieved, then all attempts should be made to establish peace. peace. And if these attributes of a same soldier, of Guru Nanak, of Guru Gobind Singh, are used in the religion and in the politics, normally people say, don't, don't. Mix religion and politics. Yes, religion and politics should not be discussed because religion is normally uh, the rituals. And everybody says my ritual is better and your you ritual, ritual is better. But if we go into the attributes of the spiritual message, we incorporate that in the politics. And if my politician does anything wrong, I will catch him that the attributes say you should not be taking bribe, you should not be having sexual relationship with your employees. We should not be doing these things, we should not be doing that. So with this, I conclude. Uh, it is a lot of, lot, lot of talk, but uh, because of the time, I have uh, uh, condensed it. And when I was looking at the calendar, uh, which was sent by Kathy to me, I saw that you will be celebrating Parliament of World Religions on uh, 19th of August. Just to let people know, that I will be talking at Parliament of, of World Religions in Chicago uh, on uh, religion and uh, uh, human rights. That will be on 16th of August at uh, 5 a.m. PDT, which will be, uh, I think, uh, no, 6 a.m. PDT, and it will be 8 a.m. Uh, Chicago time. With that, I'll say, Vaibhu Jika Khalsa, and why would you keep it? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Kala.